Welcome everybody to the fifth day of 31 Days of Horror and today we are looking at Zombies of Moratau which was released in 1957. Clocks in at 70 minutes long and it's directed by Edward L. Kahn who we've already seen before in uh, this um, recent series which and he was in... Uh, he directed a Creature with the Atom Brain, which is also part of the Cold War Creatures box set that this is also part of. And uh, yeah, this has, this stars Greg Palmer, who's most well known for the Creature Walks Among Us, who we've seen other actors uh, involved in before, in previous uh, films we've looked at. And it also stars Marjorie Eaton, who's most well known uh, for physically portraying the Emperor Pal Palpatine in the original release of The Empire Strikes Back. Obviously, it wasn't her voice, and obviously she was heavily uh, disguised in makeup, but weirdly enough, it was a uh, little old lady in her 80s that was uh, playing uh, that role. So, uh, yeah, which is really quite weird, and uh, that wasn't actually something that was known until 2016, 30 years after she died, weirdly enough. So, uh, yeah, but this uh, film deals with an American tycoon called George Harrison and his beautiful wife Mona and deep-sea diver Jeff Clark, uh, who are off the coast of Africa, hoping to salvage a fortune of diamonds uh, at the bottom of the sea near the voodoo haunted island of Maratau and are joined by an English girl named Jan. The treasure is reported to be guarded by zombies and walking dead men doomed to roam the earth until men stop trying to find the sacred treasure. Now, like a creature with the atom brain, do not expect these zombies to be anything like the George uh, Romero zombies or 28 weeks later or 28 days later or anything like that. They are slow, they don't have any real violence to them outside of you know killing people but you, you know you don't see limbs being ripped off or blood or anything like that but yeah in comparison to the prior film in the cold war creatures box set the werewolf this is a little bit better as the cast pacing and overall plot are not just better but also more enjoyable and uh, yeah it also doesn't outstay its welcome at only 70 minutes long whereas a werewolf was 79 minutes long and this is definitely on the uh, better side of uh, length and uh, yeah also like the setting uh, the score is decent, the zombies are rather outdated, are still creepy enough, and in typical low-budget B-movie style, it's uh, relentlessly entertaining throughout. So, uh, yeah, a really, really, really solid film. And uh, But again, I must stress, like with The Werewolf, like with Creature with the Atom Brain, you have to be into these kind of B-movie uh, films from the 50s and 60s, because, yeah, they are low-budget. They're not particularly uh, exciting in a lot of ways, but... They're just enjoyable for the fact that they're going for entertainment, solely for entertainment and uh, nothing else. And uh, yeah, they are successful in that despite their, you know, low budget tendencies. And uh, yeah, the uh, fact that they're, they're hardly the uh, biggest of spectacles going as well. But yeah, Edward L. Khan has become someone I've seen a lot from recently, uh, especially in this this year. Uh, not just because of this box set, but i've looked at other films that he's done and uh, yeah he really does deserve more of his films to be given a blu-ray release but you know at least we've got two of them in uh, the cold war creatures box set because yeah he de certainly deserves a bit more recognition for his uh, efforts and uh, yeah this is easily one of his better ones it's uh yeah right up in a little bit lower than creature with the atom brain but certainly better than a couple of others that i've seen from him and uh, yeah it's definitely the second best of the box set overall but nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.